Hi everyone and welcome back. Uh, so in the last video we have already seen how to build a simple CI setup and we were because our project is actually using PNPM. So I did to change a little bit couple of things and we were able to run our CI that is all about okay installing the dependencies and then doing a basic task. Now as we know that this is a PNPM workspace okay that contains the multiple repositories and we need to consider a few cases that not for each and every change we need to run the CI. So there are three things we need to understand. First of all, when do you want to run the CI? I mean, when do, do, do you want to run the deployment? And what all services you want to deploy? So that can be divided into two things. One is the branches. And one is the, let's say we have a dev, develop, uh, RC or maybe a master these are the three different branches we have for each and every environment so we can divide these jobs based on where you are doing a push onto a branch okay so it can be like okay develop and master these are the branches and another thing is because it's a monorepo which contains f1 f2 f3 it doesn't need that we need to deploy each and every service whenever you are doing a commit and doing a merge because let's say you are doing a change on a one service okay maybe in the auth service then obviously you don't want to deploy the order service if you are doing a change in the ui react app obviously you don't want to deploy the auth service so here we need to decide when to deploy what so these are the two assumptions we are following we need to deploy only the changed section or changed repository so we need to define the, the basic rules like when to run the, the CI because currently whatever we are doing that will run automatically when you are adding a commit but we can define the base rules basic rules that okay these jobs these are called rules we would define these roles and that will execute the jobs based on the rules defined uh, and you have multiple stages like a build, test, deploy. Cache in artifacts like when you do npm install you can cache the artifacts which are done through the pnpm install and npm install scripts wherever whatever you are going to execute as a shell script that you can put inside a script section like this is a script these are the artifacts this is the stage build similarly here on top of these jobs you can actually define the roles rules sorry rules which will say okay uh, we are going to run the CI only when this thing happens like when you push to develop when you uh, push to when you create a merge request then also you might want to create some basic checks let's say I'm a developer I'm creating a merge request then obviously I need to check some sanity okay linting is fine uh, code is building fine okay basic uh, things we can val validate and developer will also know that his merge request is clean before even merging it to the actual uh, develop master or production branch so that can be the decided in the rules okay let's uh, do that now so here we will just start writing our gitlab ci so this is our repository i will go to again to the gitlab ci yml and here we are going to use a pipeline editor and i'm going to just change this a lot okay so here uh, the stages stages let's say we are just using the base template and i have a stages 3 build test and deploy let me just clean this all build test and deploy now we need to define these are the stages and these stages will be replicated in the different jobs we are going to add okay now all the variables like if you have some variables also you can define so i will just add a simple variable which is rule changes path if you are using some uh, private repository, private package, and you wanted to add a, 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 add a GitLab CI token, that also you can add here. So anything which you want to pass dynamically, except the environment variables. So here I'm just passing the path. And then here I will start defining the base rules. Uh, base rules. I mean, this is just like a tag here. And here I will add rules. Uh, we need to write a proper YML. And these are the rules. So here, what are the rules? First of all, rules are actually uh, some criteria which we are adding. Okay, run this CI task if this criteria matches. So what we are doing is we will just create a base rule and then we will extend this base rule in other scenarios. 
so here I'm adding my first rule is if if CI commit branch equal to the CI default branch you already know this repository has a default branch if the commit branch is developed then it will execute it uh, and rules will be checked from top to bottom in the same order and you can add a uh, multiple rules you wanted to add so similarly I'm just adding uh, other uh, rules also CI commit tags whenever you are uh, pushing any tag I won't be running the CI and whenever you are actually creating a merge request then we need to uh, run this if CI pipeline source equal to merge request event this is actually request event so whenever you create a merge request it will run the validation and there is a last scenario is when manual how should I add this when manual okay when you are doing it manual then allow failure I can just say okay true when you want to allow failure you can actually set that and this is indentation that's correct now these are the basic rules and let's say I have in this repository front end and back end both the things so I need to create because we are doing a front end build differently, back end build differently, all those things. So I will create a back end rules. So here I will create a back end rule and I can extend the base rule also. Uh, it's not working. Here I can do extends. These are the, the base rules which I have added. I will copy that I will use them and here I'm just adding a variable variable is nothing but rules change path and similarly if I have any front end so these are actually this is still a rule for front end also I'm going to extend the base rule and then if there is any variables i will just add a change path here because why i'm saying this change path because we are using monorepo and we are not going to build the whole package in every service deploy we are going to use this path alias okay just use this microservice user microservice auth microservice just use this particular path only now you can just uh, add uh, some jobs so these are the stages we just added uh, the basic rules and now I will start adding the jobs and jobs are nothing but let's say if I'm doing a backend build frontend build and backend build I will add these two jobs I'm just copying it from my standard template so stage is build so the stage should be coming from this either build test and deploy so I'm using the, the build and I'm extending this the backend base rules and if you need any artifacts which are stored in the earlier jobs then you can use in the needs and script this is the shell command you are going to execute so this is our simple GitLab CI so if I just try to commit this so similarly we can also add couple of more jobs like uh, backend test frontend test backend build frontend build and you can see here frontend test needs the whatever needs the front end build so you cannot run this without uh, running the uh, front end build similarly back end deploy needs back end test similarly front end deploy needs front end test let me just see if this editor looks correct and now as we have already defined let me check the pipeline So if we see the whole pipeline, what are all the things it is going to run, you can see the build, test, test is dependent on the build and deploy is dependent on the test. So backend build, frontend build, these are nothing but uh, just going to install if you see what it is doing actually in the code, nothing. It is going to just use this uh, executor. And here the rules you already know that when you are adding a commit on the default branch and how you know the default branch in the settings uh, repository. And here you know that branch default which is a developer branch. So whenever I do the commit it will be happening like this. Or oh, let me just create a merge request. So how you do it? Uh, I will create a from the code. Where is the code base? 
so this is our main branch develop branch i will just git checkout minus b and i will create a new branch api changes and i will just update a readme file okay git status git add git commit minus m so i will just add a commit some dummy commit okay testing ci okay git push org and this is the branch you are pushing right and this is the merge request i have created on develop right so this is what this is actually you created a merge request and here in the pipeline you will see that already build is happening and this is also starting so now you can see this build build will happen in that case also so that is the merge ci this is called a merge ci that whenever you are actually creating a merge request then also you don't want it to want to run the ci pipeline now the other important part which we can add with this path let's say these are the repositories i have right so inside apps we would be having okay front end and back end something like this so i wanted to run this when there is a change happening in this repository which is typescript api so that's the advantage uh, we are going to take take from this gitlab so here we can specify the path also so here backend i will just edit this whenever any change happening let's say the backend build and here extends this is these are the rules okay whenever the change happening in the apps this path then i'm going to run the backend and currently i don't have a front end but let's say if there is a path something like this react dashboard then in that case uh, this is going to execute and you can actually put a wild card so it will execute it will consider all the path coming inside this directory so it will run this ci the backend build only happening when you are actually updating this express typescript apis so i will just commit this either my path is incorrect let me see so we have apps and uh, root path and the forward slash this is my gitlab ci currently it's running everything that should not be the case so then we will change this path okay here it is we are check saying apps express typescript apis and all of these apps are extending this base rule so front end build stage is built extends back end so it is extending the base rule tools change path okay let me see if something is wrong with this let me check the configuration okay so what i think is this changes work uh based on i think the root path so let's do it differently uh, i will change the strategy here because it's not the root path so let's uh, try to change our gitlab ci so we are doing couple of demos like how the, all these things works like in this we try to create a basic ci yml setup and now we are going to do the actual setup for our backend so what do we have is we have a 
couple of uh, Node.js services. So we are going to run the setup, build, test, deploy, all these things we are going to add as a stage. So you can get this from the commit history. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to add a couple of our stages. So what do we have here is this is a monorepo. So I will, before we add the stage, I'm going to add some default configurations. So this is the default incorruptible false, false that is fine. Here I'm going to add an image. Okay, what is the, the default image we are going to use? So here this is a node 16.13.2. Alpine I will be using just a light image. Incorruptible, let's keep it true. Okay, and then before script, because we are actually doing before script is actually hook and this will be executed uh, before everything. And what it does is it is going to install the required things because it's a PNPM, right? So we can install the PNPM globally on this container, which is going to be bootstrapped as a node 16.0. So this is default means uh, it will override any other configuration. If you haven't specified image, then it will use a Node.js image. And before script, what all we can do? Uh, I mean, we have, I mean, the container is up and running. Now, what all things we need to install because we are using PNPM. So I will install uh, PNPM globally because this is the same issue we faced uh, in the last video. I will install 6.x and then PNPM config set. I mean, you can set the store pnpm cache store directory which is dot pnpm store so it will tell the container to install all these things apk add bash so these things because we are going to run the scripts on the on the bash terminal so we need to install bash and just set this config store directory to the pnpm store install the pnpm so this is the default now what are all the stages we are going to have? We will have a setup. Setup will just check the linting stuff and all. Then we have build, test and deploy. And in here you can have a deploy dev, deploy prod. These multiple stages you can have based on where are you deploying. So if you want to isolate these services, what we can do is uh, we still need to identify how we can segregate the changes. Let's say I'm deploying only, I want to deploy only one service, right? So that I will try to identify how we can do it. Let's first try to do the setup and uh, first let's try to uh, put the caching. What all things we are going to run in the caching. So workflow and here the rules. So these rules will be applied to all the so in the last uh, example also we were having some rules that when should this whole CI setup should run, right? So whenever you have a, when the pipeline is, so the two default rules we already know that don't run this. When there is a, you are creating, pushing a tag. Okay. When CI pipeline is the push, okay. So these are the two other conditions. Now we can also, whenever you are updating the documents or whenever you are actually, so you can also look for the commit message, CI commit message. So similarly, CI commit tag, these are the global variables, which will always be there in the commit CI. And you can use these variables like CI commit message. Okay. Similarly, there is another variable we have is a CI personal token, GL token and all. So how we can just do this is, so we are going to run this for all different type of commits. I will add these two rules, which we have added in the previous video. If commit branch is the default branch and here is CI pipeline source is a push. Okay. What is this problem? It's an indentation issue. Okay. So all these cases, we are going to run the, the workflow. Okay. And apart from that, we are also going to add a dependency cache because there should be some cache library. I mean, whenever you are installing, you will be setting up the cache for it. What, why it is creating error. 
we'll start with the same column okay are they not starting deploy prod that's fine we can ignore that currently did not expect underscore okay you can just make it as a no this will be fine okay now it is valid still it is complaining okay there is an indentation problem here let me fix it okay now oh yeah there was an error because i was not indenting putting the indentation properly then we have a dependency cache like what all things we are going to cache and then this dependency cache will be extended by other jobs okay dependency cache we have and here we can just set all these policies pull push that is correct okay policies let's say pull untracked i will check what are these flags when on success and here cache policy and then there is a key cache key what are the keys we are going to use for the cache and then what all files what all files you are going to cache all those things i'm going to cache pnpm lock dot yml and then what are the path which you are going to cache so here i will just going to cache dot npm because it's a node project dot npm dot pnpm store uh, node modules then we have because we have packages and the applications and there can also be node modules so we are going to cache the directories also packages star dot npm policy pool so this is the dependency cache we have created now this will be extended by our other jobs let's say i'm creating another job is setup and this stage will be for this is setup uh, stage is so this is what i'm talking about i'm just creating a setup as a job okay stage is setup and then what are the scripts i wanted to execute here those all script i can add so i can just do pnpm install ignore scripts okay I'm, I'm going to install the pnpm right because i already have a pnpm globally installed here so i can do pnpm install here i can do pnpm install ignore script and then what it is going to extend script and then it is going to extend the dependency cache it will extend the dependency cache allow failure false this is like okay if this fails we are going to stop the ci so this is allow failure is same for all the jobs whenever you are saying false that means whenever there is an error it will terminate the whole ci and cache what is the cache policy is pull push so we are fine with this so now this setup setup is going to run for all these cases ci commit tag never but whenever whenever you are doing a push on the default branch i think this is duplicated right ci pipeline source push should we do it i mean not for each and every push so i will just remove this thing setup so it's like uh, we have only one job added now there can be another job is build all because it's a it's a pnpm workspace and whenever there is any any even a single deployment what we need to make sure is that all are building properly so stage is build and what is the script you are going to add npm run build this script we need to add in the root package json that can do the build of all the all the applications in the workspace 
allow failure should be false allow failure false and it's a build so it will generate an artifacts also right so do we need to create a cache of the artifacts that we can do here artifacts expire in let's say here we can just set an expiry one hour when on success need setup okay these artifacts so here we can also add a dependency so these are the artifacts and this build all needs setup task setup uh, job to be run okay once the setup is passing then only the build all will pass and this is when on success cache policy do we need here pull push allow failure false and here the artifacts artifacts we need to specify what all paths we are going to cache so here we can just put packages uh, let me just see if it works all the packages uh, build folder i'm going to i'm going to cache so do we have any packages i i don't think we have any packages but only we you need to cache the build folder it needs a setup i need to move this let's move this to the bottom so this is clear it needs setup artifacts all the path expires in allow failure false when on success i'm just trying to see if it works setup config contains unknown keys so here what do we have is cache keys job setup config okay let's see setup unknown keys what allow failure cache policy unknown keys okay i think it is talking about this thing cache key path policy so inside cache we have all these keys okay this path should be with the root i think okay now it works so cache what we are doing these are the files this is the key file and these are the path and this is the policy and when on success just an indentation problem i need to really take that seriously and i can just commit this thing and let's try to see so now here if you try to see what we are doing so this is our ci right uh, setup is fine this setup is running what it did is it try to create this docker container and it is creating this uh, basic setup installing this globally config setup uh, in adding the bash because it's a uh, alpine right alpine i think has a ubuntu system so you can install this apk and then ignore script installing pn npm pnpm install and it has created this cache right cache with this key and then second thing is we are doing a build and i think build is failing because some dependencies are issue here you can see packages app config build esc can't find module joy and all okay so we know that there is some build error even we can also try to run this project locally and try to see where is this build error so first thing is uh, getting things available on the local first npm run build so it is trying to build on the, all the packages and the projects so here i can see that uh, in the build all step i'm able to download the cache properly and when i'm doing npm run build it is building the first app and i got some typescript errors when i try to reproduce the same error locally i think i can reproduce this locally and this is happening locally also so i need to fix this build error because 
how to reproduce is just uh, use the same version of node.js version which we are using on the container and try to do npm run build and if you are getting the same error that means you need to fix the typescript error here and then need to push the code but the good thing is we are able to see the, the pipeline working it is able to get the cache which contains the node modules and the pnpm store and while doing a build it is failing so let's fix it so now our pipeline is passing i have fixed the build we can see that this is the build all which is building all the packages and the applications you can see it is building all the packages and all the applications in our project you can see app logger app http database and then all the services we have as applications inside apps folder so this is really clean way of doing things whatever you push you make sure that you are building the whole project all the packages and all the applications and then you can target to deploy a particular service which has been changed so this is a simple ci we will add a couple of more steps like okay now we have set up and the build now we can add a test where which is going to run the test in all these uh, projects so it can be simple same as that we can just edit the gitlab ci and add one more step and edit this in the pipeline editor uh, this can be you can say test all here you can say test all and this stage is test and it is going to do npm run test we need the dependency cache because we need the node modules and all need setup and build both okay so this is all about uh, the ci setup we have done for the monorepo at least we are able to do the prettier lint test build now the remaining is all about deployment so we will be adding the deployment script in these individual repositories individual folders inside applications and we will set up the deployment in the next video